Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our worship service again this morning, where we get a chance to lift the name of Jesus high for all that he's given uh, for us and all that he's done for us. What a blessing that we can worship him together. Um, as we get started today, we recognize today that it is Mother's Day, so for all the mothers that are watching, happy Mother's Day, and thank you for your service, especially mine if she's watching. See, the nice thing about this, having recorded services, is my mom can just tune me out once again. And this is just an incredible thing, uh, a, an incredible gift to be able to do services live where she can just turn me down, wait for Roger to come up and, and, and uh, move past this. But this is great. Um, but it is a great chance for us to worship together. We are excited to be here together, even to know that we are being brought together in our homes by the power of the Holy Spirit to worship our King. Our call to worship this morning comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Lord, we ask that you would be with us this morning as we uh, hear your call to worship you. And Lord, it's these reasons, that this verse here, this, this is the reason we worship you, is because your name is above every name, because you are high and exalted and yet you still love us. And so, Father, we just thank you for gathering us together this morning. We ask that you would hear our worship, and Lord, that you would speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, happy Mother's Day again. Uh, let's, uh, let's worship our God and sing, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. To be thinking of our king who is high and exalted and to be remembering him for who he is is a, is a daunting task because while we, while we come to church and we can understand that and we can recognize it, the truth is we treat ourselves uh, very often as if we are our own king. Uh, in the garden, the devil tempted Adam and Eve by telling them that you can be like God. And they started to believe this deception and this lie and that's the thing that they craved. And because of sin, their sin, we have the same problem. We desire to be our own king. We desire to be in control of our own lives. And we recognize that we mess it up. And so to, to sing a song like that is to, to again remember who really is the king of our lives. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So we have a chance now where we get to confess together and just take a moment to reflect on how we have exalted ourselves, we've made ourselves the rulers and leaders of our own lives when really only Christ is to be that name that is above every name. And so I wanna give you a moment uh, just with you, your families, as we go together just to confess our sin and our need for God to be placed rightly again as king of our lives. Heavenly Father, we confess to you that we, we fall short. And because of our sin, uh, we try to make ourselves the rulers, the authorities in our own lives. And we know, Father, there's so much that we can't handle on our own. We know that there's so many times we act in ways that we think are right, but they end up being so wrong. Lord, we, we are driven by our own greed, by our own pride, Lord, and, and so many other desires that we have in our hearts, and, and we... Uh, we make a mess of things. And so, Father, we confess that to you. We confess to you that we need you to lead us and to guide us as our loving king. And, Lord, we thank you that that's who you came to be, our king, that you came to rescue and save us and show us the way to live on, on paths of righteousness. And so, Father, we, we ask that you would forgive us and we help that you, or pray that you would help us to hear your words of grace to us today. In Colossians Chapter 1, it says, God the Father has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Because of Christ, our King's death and resurrection, he has bought you back from death and has forgiven you all of your sin. My prayer is that this brings you joy this morning as we remember again this incredible story to us. Amen. Good morning, Bethany family and friends. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. We are thankful that uh, you are here and that we have been blessed to have mothers who took care of us. Um, I hope today is a special day for you. I want to read a passage from Matthew 12, verses 46 through 50. It mentions mothers, um, but it, I don't know that it's ever been used as a Mother's Day text. And um, I have something else in mind for it, but it does tie into mothers. And the verses are, go like this. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. One of the things about mothers is that they care so deeply about their family. And during this time when many of us are separated from family, uh, I can imagine for most mothers it is a, a hard time, especially if your kids are away and you can't see, be with them or your grandchildren, you can't be with them. We can't be with our grandchildren and it is painful. And. Uh, we, uh, we hope this will be over soon. But you know, um, there is another uh, social distancing that we go through in life, and that is when our loved ones leave us. And we are physically separated from them as we are physically separated from God himself. And one day we know that that will end too. And can you imagine the reunion we will have uh, when God, who calls us, his mother and brother and sister when we get to be reunited with him. Um, I am thankful that that day will come for all of us who believe and trust in him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today that you are in control, um, that you weren't surprised by the pandemic that hit us. You knew about it from the beginning and that you still care for us, uh, even in the midst of what seems to be very hard times. Uh, you care for us deeply. You love us uh, more than we can imagine. And so we, we just thank you that we can trust you, that uh, you are the one who uh, has made everything. You are the one 
who has allowed this virus to come into being. And we pray that you would put an end to it uh, and that many would be spared uh, from the consequences. We pray that you would be with those who have been suffering with the virus. Um, and we pray for those who have uh, experienced the grief of losing lost ones. We just pray to be with them in a special way. We pray for those who are shut-ins, uh, especially those who are in nursing homes and can't see anyone. Lord, and they're kind of locked into their rooms, and uh, we just pray that you would give them comfort and strength and let them know again how much you love them. We pray for our church. Uh, thank you that we can be part of this group, uh, part of your family. We pray for our pastors, that you would bless them and their families, that you would uh, give them strength and comfort them um, and just bless them. Be with uh, our country and our leaders, Lord. Give them special wisdom uh, to know how to end this uh, time of seclusion in a safe way, but in a way that also is helpful to all everyone. Uh, just thank you and praise you for being our God and our Father, and we uh, pray your special blessing on our mothers. In Jesus' name, amen. With all that's going on in the world around us today, we're constantly reminded of our need for the Lord. And in Philippians chapter 4, verses 19 through 20, it says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen.
Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Hey, Bobby O. Happy Mother's Day. You're my favorite mom. Love you. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Mom. All the mothers. Mom, love you. Aww. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day! We love you, Mom! Happy Mother's Day, Mom! We love you! And all the wonderful Good mothers of Bethany! Bethany. Morning, kids. I hope that you've had a great week. I found myself getting a little bit bored this week, and so I got myself a uh, a new Lego set. Actually, I borrowed it from my good friend, Izzy Abrahamson. It is a superhero Lego set. Mm -hmm. Check it out. It's a good one. And I love doing Legos. I always have since I was a little kid. I love putting Legos together, and especially when I got a new box of Legos. But the one thing I don't really like is these instructions. I don't really feel like I need to follow the instructions. I can do it on my own. So I take out the bag and I can just go to work. So I don't know about you, but this one is of a car, and I love the cars, and I just start putting all the pieces together. So I wish I could do this right with you. I wish you guys were here to be able to do this Lego with me, but wait a second, where do the wheels go? Actually, how do the wheels go on this thing? And this steering wheel, does it go here? Or, you know, honestly, maybe I do need the instructions. It's really hard to make this Lego set without the instructions because the guy who designed this really cool car, this Spider-Man car, he put the instructions in there so that I would be able to make it look just like what he designed. Instructions are helpful. Now, any, <clears throat> any wives who are watching this can also nudge their husbands to listen to this part as well. But at times, we might think, oh, instructions are trying to limit us. But when we get instructions... Like from the designer, he's actually trying to help us. And the Bible is full of instructions as well. It's not only instructions. We, we hear these wonderful songs. We hear this wonderful declaration of what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. But there are also so many instructions. And they're not there to be mean. They're there to help us so that we can walk in God's will. So I want to encourage you to read God's word. Read the instructions and listen to people as they instruct you in God's word. I really miss seeing all of you face to face. I hope to see you all again real soon. And I hope that you have a really great week. Bye, kids. We have a chance in our service this morning to offer up our prayers to our Heavenly Father and ask Him uh, to work in ways that we need Him to. And as we, uh, as we come together today, again, we want to be praising God for our mothers uh, that made us all possible, right? The old joke there. And so um, it is good to have our, our loving mother, someone who cares for us. And, and our mothers are often a picture of Christ, one who cares tenderly for us. And so we praise God for the mothers that He's provided for us. Uh, we also want to know, usually every year we have a baby bottle drive for the Crisis Pregnancy Center, and we're still doing that again this year yet, uh, but we don't have bottles. So uh, Pastor Roger and I were brainstorming, uh, maybe you can uh, either take like a, a solo cup and write Crisis Pregnancy Center on it and, and work on filling that up, or maybe you can take your favorite coffee mug and put that out there. I know that maybe sounds gross, but there's dis disinfectants for that. So you can use your, uh, your favorite coffee mug. Just something to put it in place to know that we're, we're collecting money again for the Crisis Pregnancy Center because the need there hasn't stopped. So we want to encourage you to do that between now and Father's Day. 
Um, and so we have other prayer requests. We still want to be lifting up uh, Dean Bankston, who is regaining. Uh, praise God, he's regaining movement in his right side. So we want to continue to pray for him as well. Uh, we want to pray that God gives us wisdom as there's talk of reopening, that we would do it wisely uh, so that our, our government leaders would, would be leading us in the right way so that this doesn't spike again and have another wave. So uh, please be in prayer for that, for wisdom, for us, for protection. And, and I'm sure there's plenty of other things that uh, we could be praying for. Uh, again, as we have done, if you're watching this on Facebook, please, please feel free to comment uh, to your, your fellowship of believers, that community that's gathered together. Uh, if you have a prayer request you'd like people to lift up, please put it in the comments. Or you can contact our church office and we can, we can put those out there as well. So I'm going to open us in, a pray, in prayer and I encourage you in your homes to be praying together, maybe with the prayer request that you have for your own families. But um, as, we, as we open this time, let's pray together. Father, I thank you for the chance to gather. I thank you for the chance to pray. I thank you for how much you love us and that for all that you've done for us. Lord, I thank you for your provision of mothers for us that, that um, raise us and, and nurture us and, and show us how to live. Uh, and Father, we just thank you for the picture that that is of, of Christ and the, and the Holy Spirit that's given to us to raise us, to nurture us, and show us how to live. And Lord, we pray that um, you would allow us to be a blessing to our moms today. Uh, Lord, we pray that you continue to be with Dean and Linda. Watch over them. And Father, as we do reopen the state or look to reopen the state, and, and we pray that you would just give us wisdom in this, Father. We pray that you would really guide us and that you would help us to see uh, what is good to do. So Lord, uh, as we pray together in our homes, we, we ask right now that you would hear our prayers together. In Jesus' name. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the chorus of this next song we're going to sing um, says, If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need. Take everything. And this prayer can be a, a beautiful prayer um, at times, but um, I think in most cases it can also be a very hard prayer to mean. So as we sing this next song, as you read this next song, I, I encourage you to not just, just do that, but, but to pray this prayer with us. treasure. 
Good morning, Bethany family. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. And unlike me, I hope you haven't resorted to cutting your own hair yet. Um, I look forward to worshiping with you again really soon. And in the meantime, I will see you on Facebook. Morning, everybody at Bethany. This is Joanne Gunderson. Norman's at work today. Um, I just wanna say I miss seeing everybody's faces but pretty soon this should be over. But in the meantime, we don't have to worry because God is in control. Bye. See you soon. Hi, Bethany family from Mark and Sandy Petrowitz. We miss you and we look forward to gathering together again with you. God bless. See you soon. Hi, everybody. Hi, Bethany. We miss you. We can't wait to see you again. Happy Mother's, Happy Mother's, Day. Mother's Day. Hi, Bethany family. We miss you all. And to all the mothers out there, Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day! Day. Morning again, everyone. It's really great constantly as we get together to uh, be able to see some videos and some greetings from all of you. So thank you so much for being willing to send those in. If you haven't done it yet and uh, you, you're interested and willing to do that, we'd love to get you to make a video for us and just to give a greeting and we'll put it together in the next couple weeks. Now, I want to reveal something about myself as we start. The older I get, the more I realize that I don't know, which is actually an amazing thing because when I was between the ages of 14 and 17, I knew everything, everything. And somehow, I've gone downhill since then. But one of the problems with knowing everything is that you have no interest in allowing 
yourself to learn anything new and you definitely don't want any advice or to get any instruction. But thankfully, one of the wonderful gifts that God has blessed me with over the last 20 plus years is an awareness that I don't know everything and therefore I could really benefit from other people's instruction. And I don't think it's just me that God gives this little benefit to. In fact, in the New Testament, we find a number of different verses where God is calling for brothers and sisters in the family of God to both have the love and boldness to instruct one another, but also the humility to let ourselves be instructed. If you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to turn with me to the book of Colossians, which again, like last week when we were in Ephesians, I mentioned, starts with this declaration of what Christ has done for us, and then towards the end of it, we find instructions on how to live out this new life in Christ. I'm going to read from chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, and read verses 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Father, as we hear your word this morning, I ask for your grace and for your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and give us the humility to listen and to be instructed. I pray, Lord God, that you would have your way, that there'd be more of you and more of your truth in us than our own thinking and understanding. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thanks to the pandemic that we are experiencing and to the quarantining, so many parents have become instant school teachers. Now, professional teachers are still doing their job and they are doing, I think, a wonderful job in the midst of instant transformation for them. But in the homes, parents across the world are becoming school teachers and teachers of school subjects. And there's a lot of them, I'm going to make the, at least I'm thinking that there's a lot of them who have been saying to themselves, how am I supposed to do this? I'm not trained for this. I can't pull this off. Who am I? And perhaps as you hear this passage from Paul saying, I want you to teach and admonish each other, you are having those exact same thoughts. I'm not trained for this. I can't pull this off. Who am I? How, how am I supposed to teach people about God? Now, the complete other side of the coin, there, there may be people hearing this verse and going, all right, that is license for me to teach and instruct, to tell everybody what I think, to tell everybody everything that I believe and what I think about them. But I want you to notice that there is a check in this verse that comes right before verse 16, because the call to teach and admonish one another is not a liberty and license to go tell everybody off and tell them what you think about them. That's not instructing, that's criticizing. And there's a difference. There's a big difference between the two. And in verse 12, Paul actually prefaces all of this by saying, clothe yourself with compassion. Clothe yourself with kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and love. It's very hard to be arrogantly and meanly teaching somebody when you are clothed with those characteristics of Christ. That's why Paul puts that first. But having gotten dressed with these clothes of Jesus Christ, verse 16 tells us, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. Don't teach and admonish one another your own thoughts and feelings and agendas. That's not what Paul is instructing the Corinthian church, pardon me, the Colossian church. 
In fact, if you go back to the book of Jeremiah, I've really been blessed with reading Jeremiah lately. You go back to the book of Jeremiah, we find all sorts of problems that come up when the false prophets are going around teaching their own feelings, their own agendas, rather than the word of the Lord. And so Paul begins by saying, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Before he tells you to teach, before he tells you to admonish, he starts by saying, let God's word live in you. Let it take residence like a home in your heart. Now, I find this very interesting, though, from the standpoint of comparing it with what we looked at last week. The, the sort of the main sentence that we had was to submit to each other, but it was found in chapter 5 in this set. It began with the idea of be filled with the Spirit, then Paul went on to say, speak to one another in joyful songs, be thankful to God, and then submit to one another. And I kind of summarized it by saying, be joyful, be thankful, and be humble. But what we have here is so similar. Instead of saying, be filled with the Holy Spirit, here it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Then Paul says, again, the idea, sing to one another with spiritual songs, with joyfulness. Again, he says, be thankful to God. And then he says, I want you to teach and admonish one another. So as a comparison, and as putting both of them together, filled, be filled with the Holy Spirit and let the word of God dwell in you. Always be joyful, always be thankful, and teach each other with humility. And receive people's teaching with humility. But I want to just take a, a, just a quick minute with you to look at the specifics of these two instructions one to teach and the other to admonish. To teach means to provide instruction in formal and informal settings. Teaching refers literally to having truth and now delivering it to or imparting it to somebody else. Teaching is an orderly presentation of the Christian faith so that others may know and that they may grow. To admonish, and maybe this is where this gets a little bit more need for uh, understanding, because in the English, admonish usually comes off very negatively, that you need to admonish somebody, correct them, discipline them. And there is a sense of that in the Greek, but more it means to counsel someone so that they avoid some kind of improper course. And so what it means is as you teach them and they go off running with the new teaching, if they go running in the wrong direction, you need to admonish them, kind of steer them back onto the place where you were seeking to direct them. Grant Ritson, pardon me, Ritson, son, uh, he, he actually makes a note saying that teaching has to do with communication of truth, but admonishment has to do with the application of it. Some people can receive the instruction, but in the beginning they struggle to, how do I apply this to my life? And they need not just the teaching, but the training of how to do that. Think of it this way. If, if you are a, a driving instructor, you got a class full of students, they got a book, right? You're going to learn all about driving. You're all sitting there in the classroom. The teacher's teaching everybody, here's how to drive. But then he gets in the car with them as they get behind the wheel so that he can help them apply the book knowledge to when they're actually driving down the road. That's what Paul's talking about. Teach and also admonish in all wisdom. You, dear Christians, you in the family of God and the fellowship of the faith, you need to submit to one another but also to be willing to take up the mantle of teaching one another. That's what we find actually in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. We read that the early church does these certain things. If you read verse 42, the first one is that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Now, the word they refers to all the people in the church, but, but maybe specifically to the 3,000 that were added to the church on that day of Pentecost, which we find out right before verse 42. 
But what's so interesting to me about that verse, and, and this is not a theological point, this is a perception point on my part. When I read that verse, I usually hear it, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And when I hear the word apostle, I think of these, these I, I guess I picture these sort of grand, perfect, all-knowing professors. Uh, I, I think about I, these sort of giants among men who had everything right and therefore they only did what was perfect and they only taught what was perfect all the time. But the truth is these very apostles in this very verse, 52 days before this, they were fighting with one another over which one was the greatest. They were denying Peter at least, that Jesus was, that he was with Jesus. And when Jesus is arrested, they're all running away scared. Just 50 plus days before this, they were a mess. 50 plus days isn't that long. It's, it's less than we've been involved in this quarantining thing. But these men were the ones that God said, as much of a mess as they were 50 some days ago, you go into all the world baptizing people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And so when Acts chapter 2, 42 says people devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, that's who they're devoting themselves to. Those are the teachers, but it's not wrong because those were the ones that God had commissioned as much of a mess as they were 50 some days ago. That's who God said you have to go and tell. And if you don't, nobody else is going to do it. And you have to go instruct and you have to go teach. Even though you might not think you're ready for it, you're the ones that I've called to do it. And the reason I bring all that up is because I want there to be a voice of confidence so that when you think to yourself, I can't teach, who am I to teach anything? I'm not like one of those perfect disciples. There were no perfect disciples. There aren't any perfect disciples. But what there are are disciples who have the privilege of instructing others about our perfect Savior. That's what we have. And to do so, being filled with the Holy Spirit, having the Word of God dwell in us richly, being filled with joyfulness and thankfulness and humility, you are exactly who God has called to teach and to admonish. But what am I supposed to teach? Teach, Paul says, what is dwelling in you richly. Just make sure that it's the word of Christ. Because that what is dwelling in you is the word of Christ. As Paul instructed here, because Paul later writes to Timothy about the word, he says to Timothy, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching and for training and for correcting and for rebuking in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's why he wants you to have the word of God in you, because the word of God is able and is useful for teaching and training and correcting and rebuking. In fact, this is so similar to an Old Testament instruction. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, we find in verse 6, God saying, these commands that I give you today are to be on your heart. And then in verse 7, it goes on to say, impress them. In other words, teach them. Put them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along. You fold when you lie down and when you get up. You parents, you fathers, and you wonderful mothers. Maybe even more apparent than ever, as we can't meet together and, and we can't come uh, together for Sunday school or for confirmation so much or for youth group, you have the glorious privilege of instructing your children in the faith. Don't be afraid. Don't be nervous. Let the word of God dwell in you richly and teach and admonish. 
But more than that, more than just parents to kids, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you learn about God, learn about the doctrines of the faith, learn about his faithfulness and his love, his power and his compassion, about the grace that God has given you, about the sacrifice Jesus made, and that it is through him and him alone that we are right with God, about the beauty of being part of a church, about, learn about the enemy and his temptation, but also God's power to protect us. And having learned it, instruct me. Instruct one another what you've learned. Share it. Don't be intimidated. Don't be afraid. Humbly teach and admonish. And as you do it, I want to close by reading for you from the end of Romans chapter 15. Romans 15, 13 through 14 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then Paul says, I myself am convinced, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, you are complete in knowledge, and that you are competent to instruct one another. Father God, we praise you and thank you for your word. We thank you for the body of Christ, that we might hear it individually, but also together. And I pray, Lord God, that you would fill us with joy and with thankfulness, fill us with your Holy Spirit, fill us to overflowing with your word, that it might dwell in us. And I pray, Lord God, that you would fill us with humility and the courage to teach and instruct. I pray that you would be teaching us in your word all about you and that you would give us the joy to share it with one another, not to dominate each other, not to one-up each other, but to be a blessing to each other so that we all might be spurred on to love and good deeds, to knowing you, to honoring you and worshiping you and to growing together in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In my, uh, in my studies uh, over the last year, I just completed my semester um, yesterday. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning about homiletics and preaching and teaching and things. And, you know, I sit under Evan and Roger and I just sit there and say, I, I can't do this. You know, I'm, I'm not a natural off the cuff person. I can't, uh, I can't do things without writing them down, as you're going to find out right now. Um, <laughs> but through the power of the Holy Spirit, I can. I can't do it on my own. But not only can I do it through the Holy Spirit, but we're commanded to. We're commanded to preach and teach. And it's just such a blessing. And I mean, what a more perfect song. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Let's sing.
thank you so much for being a part of our time together as we worship. And I want to encourage you again to read in God's word, be filled, and let it dwell in your heart and share it with each other. Do it with those that are in the house with you. Do it with those who you call on the phone and encourage and spur one another on. Let me close again with that same verse from Romans chapter 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.